Howdy, Tommy from Tank Nations, and in this video, we're gonna show you how to culture your own cocoa pods. Uh, in this video, you'll learn how to make more cocoa pods than you even know what to do with. And uh, we decided to make this video because reading through the comments in our cocoa pod video, it looked like a lot of you might want to grow your own. So we're gonna discuss why you might wanna do that as well, and also whether it's really gonna be effective in your particular use case. So stay tuned, if you like this content, please hit that like button, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching. So these are the cocoa pods that I harvested today. In each of these five pouches, there's hundreds if not thousands of cocoa pods. The ones that you're seeing are the adults. The babies don't get picked up by the camera, um, but in each of these 12 ounce baggies, they're just loaded with pods. I collected these by siphoning from the bottom of the culture tank. It's that simple. Started a siphon, put it into the spout of these five baggies and just sucked along the bottom of the tank. So this is the tank where I pulled all those copa pods out of and you can see it's basically just an empty 20 gallon aquarium with very light aeration. The only thing that we have in here is a small piece of PVC and a zip tie to hold down the bubbler. So we started this tank by cleaning out one of our brine shrimp tanks. We clean them out about once a week. And instead of sterilizing the 10 gallon aquarium, we just drained it, sucked out as much of the gunk as we could, left what was stuck to the biofilm on the bottom of the tank. And that became the food source for these copa pods. See, it doesn't take a lot of food to grow copa pods. And if you look in here, even after pulling all those pods out, there's still hundreds and hundreds and thousands of them in this aquarium. So, these benthic copa pods are extremely easy to grow and really the key to growing them is just to have a fairly sterile aquarium. If you don't have things that are going to be eating the copa pods, you know, no hydroids, no aptasia, no uh, the larger copa pods that will eat them or the flatworms that will eat them, if you have a fairly sterile tank with just a little bit of food, you can grow these pods. And you can set up a tank like this by grabbing a 10 or 20 gallon aquarium, filling it with salt water that you mix, and then putting a few pinches of flake food, give them a week to decay. A little bit of aeration, give those pieces of flake a week to decay, and then add just a few copa pods. Within one, two, three weeks, you'll have just as many in that tank, and you can continue to harvest it for weeks and weeks to come. Uh, something that I did in high school is I would clean my aquarium and I would take the detritus that I siphoned out of the sand and put it into shallow Tupperwares. I didn't use any aeration. And four or five days later, I could harvest thousands of copa pods. And then I was selling these to local hobbyists and also on eBay. Um, it was that simple. I mean, I had a little one foot by one foot seven tiered rack that I got at Walmart for like 40 bucks and I had seven uh, little Tupperwares and I would start a new one every other day or you know every few days and I had more copa pods than I knew what to do with. So I also want to talk about why you might want to grow copa pods. A uh, really common uh, comment on that copa pod video was if you have fish like pipefish or mandarins or uh, Rasses that like to eat copa pods throughout the day, it's a good idea to add more copa pods to your aquarium every once in a while. And uh, if you're adding small amounts of copa pods, this isn't really going to be beneficial because remember, these fish are eating hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of copa pods every day out in the wild. Like, if they're only eating copa pod, they need to eat a lot of these. Look how small they are. So uh, if you're only adding a couple hundred at a time, that's the snack that they eat between breakfast and lunch. Like that's not gonna sustain them. Uh, th really the benefit to adding copepods is if you're, if you're adding a different strain. Now, if you're culturing your own copepods, it, can be, uh, it can be not cost prohibitive, right? Because if you're spending $15 on 100 or 200 copepods and you need to feed thousands a day, you're gonna be spending hundreds of dollars a day to feed your fish. So if you're growing your own copepods, you can get those densities of copepod where you could actually supplement their diet a little bit for an effective price. Um, but you also have to keep in mind that these copepods are doing other things in the aquarium. And if you have an unnaturally high population of copepods, what is that gonna do to the ecology of your aquarium? These copepods are eating the biofilm. They don't just eat diatoms and dinoflagellates. They eat all sorts of microbes. 
and they're also uh, creating waste in the aquarium through their poop that is, uh, and even their, you know, discarded body parts as they die and they shed and things like that. All of this is gonna affect the microbial ecology in the aquarium. So adding tons of copepods all the time might actually cause harm to your aquarium in ways that you haven't considered. So it's probably better to try and strike some kind of balance. That's what I was trying to explain in that last video. Your tank is going to strike a balance over time where you have a carrying population, carrying capacity population of copepods in your tank. And you can try and increase that number maybe by adding more habitat for them or feeding some phytoplankton, but creating a naturally high population of copepods might not be beneficial for your tank. And we just don't have data to support whether or not it is. Another reason why you might want to culture copepods is you want to feed some kind of larvae or potentially even feed some of your corals, uh, spot feed them with live copepods. Um, if you're going to do that, and you definitely want to use the sterile approach that I talked about and not the batch approach where you're taking detritus out of an aquarium, um, because if you're taking the detritus out of the tank, you might also be pulling organisms that could affect the larvae that you're trying to culture. Copepods are a great food source for larva culture, and the benthic copepods, so long as they aren't going to bother the fish, they can be great for helping to keep your culture tanks clean. Um, I know a lot of hobbyists are getting into aquaculture. That was something that really interests me in the past and something that I would really like to get back into as we get kind of caught up at the shop. Um, but culturing your own copepods is a very easy way to supplement their diets if you use a method like this with the benthic copepods. If you're gonna do this, then you wanna make sure that you're enriching your copepods before you feed them with some kind of phytoplankton blend. This is because larval fish are very small and there's only so many food items that they can eat. So you wanna make sure that every single one of those is packed with as much nutrition as possible. If you're growing your copepods in mass just to supplement your aquarium, uh, then you don't really need to worry about that. You can just let them subsist off of the microbial film that's in your culture tank. Thanks so much for watching another video. I hope that you found it helpful. Uh, if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to our channel. We got a ton more content coming out like this. Uh, like I said in the couple pod video, if you're local and you want some pods, we'll give some away to you. Uh, if you could bring in your own container, a reusable container, a glass mason jar that you use for your fish tank, something like that, that way we're reducing the amount of plastic that we're putting into the environment. I really hate using these single-use plastic containers. We kind of have to use these for some of the microalgae products that we have here. Um, but again, thanks for watching. Here's a nature clip, and we'll see you in the next one. Since we've been talking a lot about ecology lately, I wanted to show this video of a prescribed burn at Jonathan Dickinson State Park during their annual fire fest. This was really beautiful to see at night and fire is incredibly important for the ecology of many of Florida's ecosystems. It's necessary to preserve and maintain diversity in our native landscapes. Really cool to see.